risk student that faced educational challenges in high school? How many of all that's you? Is that any of you all? Educational challenges in high school? No? That was me. Okay. No? Gosh, you guys are brilliant. I expect a lot from you. After failing multiple classes during his sophomore year, the principal advised that Stacy should leave high school to pursue other interests without obtaining a high school degree. Anybody gotten any counseling advice like that? You're just not doing well enough. Maybe you should switch schools and do something different. Anybody? Yeah, okay. Anybody failed a couple classes? Life circumstance, raise your hand. We can be honest with each other. We're friends. Okay, very good. Um, Stacy's mom asked him to make a choice as to whether to remain in school or to leave. One of the first things I ask you all when we meet is who motivates you? How many of you all said mom? A lot of y'all said mom. Mom was actually my number one answer. It's funny that mom was the person who brought you back in and said, is this really what you want to do? At that moment, and without hesitation, Stacy decided to remain in school to complete his education. After graduation from high school, Stacy attended several local colleges and left <coughs> two colleges due to academic challenges. It wasn't until this point that Stacy decided to focus on education and work toward obtaining a college degree. Stacy has volunteered to speak to this group today to hopefully inspire each of you to pursue greater goals and objectives. Stacy often advises that each of us has a choice about the things we do and the way we respond to the things that happen to us in life. Yes? It's your life and your choices. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker, Mr. Stacy L. Young. Thank you very much. So bear with me because we have this column right in the middle, so I'll try to rotate a little bit back and forth between sides and maybe stand back a little bit more. So if you're having trouble seeing me, bear with me for a moment. I'll spend a little time over here and a little time over here, so I'll try to have a balanced approach. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. So first and foremost, do not be afraid to engage with me. I like to talk. So unfortunately, uh, Nadia has only given me about 45 minutes. I could actually probably fill your entire day. But because I was given 45 minutes, that's, that's what I'm going to use. But I'm actually going to try to use a little bit less than that because I know when I've gone to events and there's a keynote speaker and you see it on the schedule that they're going to be speaking for 45 minutes and you're like, oh my gosh, 45 minutes is an awful long time. Well, the other thing that I like to take into consideration is that I don't need to necessarily fill all that time to necessarily de deliver my message. But from being on the other side, I'm going to try to finish in about 30 or 40 minutes yeah, um, and then that will leave some time for question and answer. And the other thing that I'll tell you is, if you have any questions about anything or if you want to make a comment, this session is for you. It's not for me. It's for you. So you can stop me at any time. You won't throw me off my game. I'm used to doing these type of things. So uh, please feel free to engage. So first and foremost, I want to thank Nadia for bringing me in and, and giving me, sorry, I'm catching you in a moment, but, <laughs> but I, I want to thank her for bringing me in and giving me the opportunity. Um, you've got a great leader in this program, so let's give Nadia a round of applause. <laughs> and then the next thing that I, I, I want to say to each of you is that you're already off to a great start. Do you know why you're already off to a great start? Yes, ma'am. You joined the program. That's that's. Step number one, but what else have you done right today? You showed up. So a lot of times in life, things begin by one, exerting some effort, because there was some effort that was required in order for you to fill out the application to be a part of this program. Second, you showed up. Things often don't happen without showing up. Let me tell you. There's a lot of folks that sit at home and like, where's that magic genie? Because I'm going to sit right here and it's going to show up and it's going to come to me. If you believe that, I've got you know, some real estate property that I want to sell you. It doesn't happen that way. You've got to um, show some effort and show some initiative and you've got to show up. But the other thing is you have to be ready and you've got to be prepared. And you sometimes have to be prepared for the unexpected. Well, I came in here today, and you probably heard me go, yeah, because I was stressing because Nadia said she wanted her program to get on time, you know, start on time. I couldn't get the projector to work, but no worries. I was prepared. You know what I did to prepare for the session? Just to make sure this 
if this didn't work, I needed to have a backup plan. I could stand here and talk, but I've prepared material for this group. And I had material that I had before. I met with uh, Nadia before the session, and then I added some additional information just for this group. But what I did was I came prepared with my presentation already on my computer. I came prepared with my presentation in the bag on a USB drive. I came prepared. I sent the presentation to my email. I came prepared. I have a copy of my presentation, hard copy, on paper, in my bag. That's what being prepared is all about. Because we don't know what's going to happen, but we want to make sure that we're doing things to make sure that it gives us the best opportunity. So let me start the slideshow here. While you're starting, everyone needs to move a chair and get, up and get personal. You might not like that, but I want to get personal with you because this is a personal story that I'm going to share. So why don't we go ahead and get started so that I can maximize my time. The other thing that I'd like you to do for me, Nadia, if you wouldn't mind, when I get to the 15 minute mark, you can just hold up your hand, sure. give me 10 and a 5, and then I know, then 10, and then 5, and hopefully I don't get to that 5 mark. Okay. All right. So. Bear with me, I'm, I'm still learning my technology here, but give me a moment and we'll get things going. So, it's your life and your choices. Um, my name is Stacey L. Young, I go by Sly, so if you want to call me by name, feel free to call me Sly. I, I don't need to be called Mr. So-and-so, or you know, I'm a professor. I don't have my students call me professor because I like to be a part of the group, that's just my style. So call me Sly. Be at home, be relaxed, get comfortable. So I just recently started a nonprofit educational organization called Saving Our Communities at Risk Through Educational Services, which is a, a play on words with, so my organization is called Socrates, but there's a famous Greek philosopher called Socrates. Are you familiar with Socrates? So Socrates' way of teaching was more about question and answers versus me giving you the solutions. So a lot of times, some teachers will teach, I'll say sometimes, teachers will teach by just giving you the solutions and telling you what they want you to know. I believe that students learn best by having an interactive process. So again, I'm going to give you information. If you have questions, don't be afraid to ask because I'm here for you, not for me, because I've already been there, done it. I'm just going to share some information about what's happened in my life so that you can use it and, and it will be useful for you. So. Case study number one, so you didn't know you were going to work right off the bat. Take a look at this. What type of student do these grades describe? I'm sorry, we can't hear you and we want to hear you. Who was that? Failing student. Failing student. Okay. What else do you say? Yes, ma'am, Diana. Uh, needs for improvement. Needs for improvement. What else? I'm sorry, what's your name? Why don't you tell me your name is? Eric. Eric, okay. What up? Improvement in 12th grade. Improvement. Yeah. Compared to some of the others. Anything else? Anybody want to add? So, if you look at this, especially the 10th grade year, the only thing was passed was English with a D. Physical education, probably the easiest thing to pass, was failed. How do you fail PE? You show up, you participate. It should be easy. So looking at all the grades collectively, you see the high school grade point average was a 1.52, a D, for the entire high school experience, a D. Then class ranking, 208 of 303. 208 out of 303 the bottom 8% of the graduating class, okay? Case study number two. What type of students do these, Greek, sorry, do these degrees describe? Bachelor of Science in Business Administration, BSBA in International Business with Marketing, Master of Business Administration, MBA, Finance and Investments with Human Resource Management, Master of Science, Project Management. What type of student do these degrees describe? Yes, sir. Driven students. A driven student. Ah. Others, don't be shy. What does this say to you? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to go to the back and then I'll go to the one the lady in the front. The, the 12th, uh, 12th grade, uh, student got um, a good grade in chemistry, marketing, and business. Okay. Um, so I guess playing to their strengths. 
Oh, maybe. Good observation. Interesting ob observation. Yes, ma'am. The student had a goal. Well, the student obviously had something in mind in order to achieve all of this. And it probably started off with, with a plan, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So, introduction. So, today's discussion is not about fairy tales, but my life. Um, each of us makes decisions every day, but some decisions have a greater impact than others. Do you believe that? Yeah. And this discussion will focus on some of my decisions and other considerations. And then each of you, <coughs> excuse me, may better understand the importance of difficult decisions and perseverance via discussion of my personal challenges and decisions. So I'm going to share some of the things that I experienced and things that happened along the way. And then each of us must be prepared to deal with the benefits and or consequences of our decisions. So every day we make choices. We have to be responsible and accountable for the decisions and the choices that we make. Most of the time, nobody is making the decision for us. And as adults, we have to figure things out. It doesn't mean that we don't say, hey, Nadia, can you help me? I'm, I'm trying to think through this. There's nothing wrong with asking someone for help. Let me, let me step away from my presentation for just a moment. I'm going to throw out a word. And I want you to tell me about this word and what it means to you. Vulnerability. What does that word mean to you? Inability to take control of your own situation. Inability to take control of your own situation. Others. Don't be shy. Yes, ma'am. Weak. Weak. What else? Maybe negative. Potentially, you hear vulnerability, it might be a negative term or negative connotation. Well, vulnerability is not a negative thing. It's not a weakness. Do you know that being vulnerable is actually a strength? It took me years to realize that. Because vulnerability, allowing yourself to be vulnerable, means that you're trying to take some action forward. So I could be vulnerable. So let's say that I was one of you right now. I could be vulnerable, and maybe there's some things that I wouldn't tell my parents, but now I have a great resource that's away from my family. Nadia, hey Nadia, I, you know what, can I have a conversation with you about some things? Sure. All right, here's what's going on. I, can, I don't feel comfortable talking to my parents, but can I tell you this? And do you know, sometimes by allowing yourself to be vulnerable and being real with yourself, it helps us to release some of the demons that we possess. And so, do, don't think about having a vulnerability as a weakness, but think of it as an opportunity for improvement, okay? So why am I here? I'm a former student that was challenged by the school environment without any real focus. I just drifted through high school. Nobody cared whether I did well or not, so why should I? Wrong attitude. Share my experiences to help prevent others from following the same unnecessary path. It goes back to choice again. I made some really bad choices. Stress the importance of personal accountability and responsibility. I've already mentioned that a couple of times right now. We have to be personally responsible and accountable for our own actions. We cannot blame our choices on others. We're individuals. We have brains for our reasons. We need to stand independently. And it's just something that we learn as we become adults. We are responsible. We think independently. And then I'm going to discuss my decision points and the paths taken to achieve my goals. So my background, as you've seen, I, I, I'm a graduate of the following schools, American University, really nice school in DC, nice private university, also the George Washington University, another good private school. But then you look at what I showed you in the case study number one, and here's a student that failed six out of seven classes. How does a student that failed six out of seven classes, and I think not even mention mentioned at the beginning that I left two schools due to academic issues. How does that individual turn things around to go to prestigious universities? Well, how about a chat about that? My work experience, I had over 10 years of senior level project management and program management and operations experience. I've worked with senior level executives in a number of industries. And I'm an adjunct business professor for the past five years. Now, so let's think about that for a moment. Failed six out of seven classes. Fast forward, is now teaching college. Hmm, let's think about that. 
And then miscellaneous. So I founded an educational nonprofit, Socrates. I'm a published author, and I'm an inspirational speaker now. So my school challenges. Bad choices were made in the selection of so-called friends. One of the things that my mom used to say to me all the time, and it didn't sink in until I was in a situation where I needed to know what was the difference between a friend, a so-called friend, what my mom refers to as an acquaintance. My mom used to say to me in junior high and high school, when I was talking about my friend, 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 my mom was like, okay, those aren't your friends. You keep calling them your friends. They're not your friends. They're your so-called friends. They're your acquaintances. So a lot of times, folks that we think are our friends are really not our friends. Because our friends will be here in a moment when you need them, whether you're in trouble or not. So I'm going to stop for just a moment and just point out my friend, Ed, who's behind the camera right now, does not have to be here today. I told him on, about this event weeks ago, and then I had an idea that I wanted to videotape this session for just for review, because I'd like to improve, and it gives me an opportunity to judge my performance and make some adjustments. And on Thursday night, I told him about my idea. I didn't even ask him to do what he's doing right now or to help me do any setup. You know what he said to me? What time should I be there? I didn't ask. That's a friend being here to support me without me asking. And that's what friends do. Um, Oops, let me go back here. So inappropriate decisions were made to be accepted by so-called friends. So many times we, we do things to be accepted by our friends, and the first thing that we should do is to make sure that we're doing the right things for us. And if it happens to work out for our friends, then that's what we do. Grace were awful, as you've already heard. Inability to accept myself and not to look to others for artificial support. Sometimes we look too much to others to give us the support that we need, and where we should be looking is inside and figuring out what do I need to do in order to support myself. Because others can be there to assist, but you've got to do the work, so you better be ready to support yourself. And then I attended and left two colleges prior to maturing, applying myself, and starting to live up to my potential. And each one of you in here today has potential. And you know what gets me excited about being here with you today? Is you're taking the first steps to maximize your potential to have a fulfilled life. So that's a great first step. So what were some of the reasons for poor performance? Lack of dedication and a desire to succeed. Well, obviously for my grades, I didn't care. I just went through the program. And I thought I'd magically get through. It doesn't work that way. Seldom does anyone achieve anything in life without exerting some effort. You've got to at least try. Absent family support system. My family did not support me. I love my family, don't get me wrong. But no one asked, how are you doing in school? No one said, let me look at your grades. No one came to the events that I did in high school. And I learned to deal with it, but it still hurts. But at the same time, I didn't realize it then, but I realize it now. Yes, it would have been nice if they showed up, but I was doing the things for me, the things that I wanted to do to make me happy. So that's where it starts. Um, sort of looking down on my list here. Uh, managing friends were more important than other priorities. Sometimes we put our friends first. So how many of you put your friends first? So it's Friday night, you know that you've got to do something. And you're like, I'm going to go out and hang out till 1 o'clock in the morning, but I know i got to get up Saturday morning at 7 a.m. to go do something. How many of you have done that? Come on. Be honest. I still do it too, but I have to admit I'm better now. But I have to understand that if I stay out until 1 o'clock in the morning and I need to get up at 7 o'clock in the morning, there are some consequences for my actions. Schoolwork was not challenging or did not maintain my interest, therefore I withdrew from the process. So fast forward, you see all the degrees, so I was capable of doing the work. That wasn't the issue. The issue was whether I was willing to connect to the work, <coughs> but the environment that I was in did not meet my learning needs. So think about 
the environments that you've been in and when you've been in school, has that always met your needs? Did the teacher connect with you? Did the material connect with you? Huh? Yes, no? So how many of you in here said, you know what, um, teacher, I don't understand this. Your way of teaching doesn't work for me. How many of you have ever said that? And, and what was the response? Did you get assistance? OK. Well, hopefully, you have a teacher that will make some adjustments to try to accommodate your needs. But if not, you need to find a replacement. Because if that environment is not working for you, and you're sitting in that environment for six to eight hours, and it's not working, you've got to look for other solutions. Don't sit there and waste your time. Time and life are precious. So make sure that you're maximizing your opportunities. I failed to ask for help to create a plan that would lead to success instead of withdrawal. And that's so line, along the lines of what I just said. I needed to take some action to get things going. It was my responsibility. And then no one cared whether I did any work or not, including me. That's not a great attitude. Success starts with the attitude that you have within you and you project out to others. Do you believe that? So imagine if I showed up here today, and I try to have a little bit of energy, but imagine if I came in here today and said, oh, you know what, I'm going to talk to you about my life and my story, and I did these things to sort of make it through. Do you think that's different than how I'm presenting it right now? Yeah. So if I'm trying to tell you about my story and convince you that you can turn things around and be positive and cheerful and all those things, doesn't mean you're going to be, oh my gosh, I'm happy. doesn't mean any of that. But the way that you project yourself is the way that others receive you, whether it's right or not. So you can't control how someone else is going to receive you. But what you can do is control the way you project yourself to others. So think about that. So this directed focus. So-called friends were used for acceptance, wrong. Feelings of self-worth, wrong. Sense of belonging, wrong. Sense of direction, wrong. Support, wrong. Understanding, wrong. And most importantly, what was wrong for me was to use them for validation of, of one of the earlier items, self-worth. And I didn't need to do that. So what are some of the reasons for change? Well, individuals do not change until individual learns to see. That is, the individual has a significant emotional event. So a lot of times in life, what will happen is we will go along and everything's fine. If everything's fine and if there aren't any consequences for our actions, is there a reason to change? No. Sometimes it's often said that individuals have to hit rock bottom before they change. And I don't believe that you have to hit rock bottom, but you need to have something that's significant, emotional, a significant emotional event. Because it's significant in you, and when you start tapping into the emotions, you really feel it. But you don't have to wait till you have that significant emotional event when you're on that downward spiral to make the change. You can start to make the change now before you get there. That's within your control. So what's a defining moment? A defining moment is an event that leads to significant change in attitude, approach, or behavior, which can be positive or negative. So each of us has had many, 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 many defining moments. What's a defining moment that you've had in your life? Come on, don't be shy. I mean, for me, it could be I've had lots of defining moments in the last couple of months. Um, I'm surprised I'm even here some days, but nonetheless, I'm here. Um, I've had death in my family, lots of death. I'm like, if I go to another funeral, I think I'm going to lose my mind. Um, I had a child. Um, that was a big change. When I got married, those are big changes. Um, whether it's positive or negative, those things do have the, the emotional, um, what do you call it, see? Significant emotional, emotional event. events. Those are all significant emotional events for me. Um, even up until today, last night it was just not a good night for me, but I had to choose to come here, want to come, to to have a positive outlook once I got here because I know that in spite of 
the things that may be going on in my life, my responsibility is to make sure that I ease the things that are going on in your lives. So whether it's answering Sianna's text at 11 o'clock, whether it's talking to China and, you know, just having a conversation, what put the key in here? Or whether staying late at work and talking to the key, even though I said I was going home. Because I know that um, that relationship is important, and I know that the impact that I have on you all indirectly impacts me because my day just gets better. Um, even sitting here now, my day has gotten better, even though I don't want to get up. But I'm here, and it's gotten better. So, you know, those are just some defining moments just within two days. Yeah, and, you know, if you think back to our childhood. When we were young, we were crawling, and then all of a sudden, one day, we're like, and everybody's like looking in there waiting, they're like, oh my gosh. And then you're like, and then and they're like, oh, go get the camera, go get the camera, here's the moment. And then you take that second step, and then all of a sudden everybody's like, oh my God, oh my God, he's walking. You think that's a defining moment? Yes. Yes, it's a defining moment. But I want to focus on the positive defining moments. So, so those moments happen over and over in your career and in, in your life. So things, things do happen. I don't want to harp on that too much. All right, so my defining moments, I realized that my career options were limited without a college degree. And let me tell you, I remember the moment that was the defining moment that changed the rest of my life. And there is nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. But I was standing out in front of McDonald's, and I'll, I'll just give you a disclaimer before it. I used to work at Chuck E. Cheese, and yes, I did wear the, the Chuck E. suit. So I've been a mouse, okay? So I was standing in front of a McDonald's one day, and I looked at the McDonald's, and I said, I don't want to work at McDonald's the rest of my life. That was the first step. It was a realization within myself. I set a goal. I don't want to work at McDonald's the rest of my life. And even though I didn't necessarily really get started, I put that goal in my mind. And let me teach you one little secret. Sometimes when we put a goal out in our minds, and a buddy of mine also says you need to put it out in the universe, so sometimes I'll put my goal, I'll speak it out loud. So, you know, you, you think it, you speak it, you hear it, you're processing it three times. So sometimes I'll communicate out loud what I want. And what happens a lot of times in life is we'll communicate what we want, and our brain has a way of checking back in with us. Once you set something as a goal, your brain has a way of checking back in with you. Is it, have you done that? Have you done that? Have you done that? So think about that and try to implement that in your life. Okay? Um, determined to leave home and not have to return. My home life when I was in high school was okay, but I lived with my sister and my brother-in-law because my mom was taking care of my grandma during my junior and senior year. It wasn't the best environment for me, and I said, I'm getting out of here, and I'm not ever coming back. I was determined to never have to come back to that environment. So that was a powerful motiv motivating tool for me. And then the likelihood of achieving future lifestyle desires required higher income, which necessitated higher levels of, of education. I had dreams. I wanted to have a nice house. I wanted to have a nice car. I wanted to be able to travel. And in order to do those things, what does it require? No money. Money. And it is known, it's a fact, the more education you receive, the better your potential of making a good salary. It's, it's simple. Maybe not simple to get there, but you give yourself a better chance of success. So self-analysis. So through my own self-analysis, and each of you should do this with yourself, I determined that my pursuits toward personal achievement required additional focus, even if no one else paid attention. Um, it was up to me to pay attention to me. It's okay to be different, as there is usually more than one way to approach or solve an issue. Too many times, individuals are trying to be conformist. And you don't have to conform. You can be you and be just fine. There are a lot of different flavors of individuals, people in this room. And it's okay. Does it make one less important than the other? Be yourself. Once you can be comfortable within your own skin, that's the one of the first steps along the path towards success. Because each of us has an opinion. We have a brain. We form opinions. 
and we can think independently. And we can share our opinions with others without being rude, nasty, or spiteful. But we're supposed to think. And if you believe in something, it's okay to believe in it. All right. Being present is, critical, is a critical factor in life since rarely does anyone achieve anything without showing up and exerting some effort. I've said that a few times because it's important. So it's OK to say, I don't know, because this doesn't mean that someone is less intelligent. So if you think that going, I don't understand, raising your hand and saying, I don't understand, or raising your hand and saying that I have a question is an issue, don't worry about that. Because there's a lot of folks that have questions and have issues. And let me tell you something, and one of the things I teach um, to my students first day of the semester is do not be afraid to ask a question. One, with my college students, a lot of times they're paying for it. So I tell them, make sure you're getting what you pay for. But even if you're not paying for it, you are paying for it in terms of your time. Make sure you're getting what you want. And if you have a question, there's probably someone else that has a similar question that may or may not be asked. So if you have a question, why walk away when you're in the environment where you can get an answer to your question? It was also necessary to periodically review my progress and refine the approach if required. So sometimes we go along a path and we may think success is this. How many of you think success is this? I'm walking along the straight line here. You think success is that? Nah. Success is this. Sometimes we go way off, sometimes we get back. But we do all the planning and the hard work to get on that line, to head up towards where we want to go. And there's a cost of success. Think about this. Each of you want to be successful, don't you? Who in here doesn't want to be successful? I'm glad that there aren't any hands up. Because the cost of success relates, bless you to the following question. For me, what was I willing to do without to achieve my goals? What was I willing to give up to get what I wanted? So if I want a college degree, what am I going to have to give up to get a college degree? What's something that um, one might need to give up to get a college degree? Time. Time. Time to do what? Study, work. Yeah, but what else might you want to do instead? Hang out. Hang out. Huh? Party. 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 Yeah. You, good answer. <laughs> Survey says. That's probably like in the 70th percentile, right? So we have to give up something to get what we want. I'll tell you um, one quick story from my class. I'll have students that will come to me at the end of the semester. And they're like, Sly, um, I know I haven't done well. What can I do? And there's a lot of professors that will say, you didn't work all semester, tough. Tough. I'm not from the school of Howard Knox because I've been there and I know that one moment in time doesn't mean that you should be forever lost. It's my job as an educator to help individuals to achieve, sometimes in spite of themselves. So a lot of times I'll say to the students, OK, you want to get a better grade in the class, but you haven't worked all semester. Is that fair to others? And then we'll have that conversation. But then the next part of the conversation is, OK, I'm glad we've got that first part done. So you want me to do something for you. But what are you willing to give up to get what you want? And you want something from me, and you need to experience a little bit of pain. Because if I give it to you, you haven't learned anything. So let's determine what it is that you want to do. And I'll start that conversation with the individual, and I have them tell me what they're willing to do in order to get what they want, putting the responsibility and accountability on them to give me some ideas, even though I have them on my own. And then I expand on their ideas once we've come to a con conclusion. And then they typically have to write a nice long essay about procrastination and other stuff. So I'm willing to help someone to get what they want, but they've got to experience a little bit of pain. So it's not, you know, never think that there's an issue with asking for assistance, because let me teach you one of the most valuable lessons that I have applied to my life. 
Do not be afraid to ask someone for assistance or to ask someone for ask someone a question because the answer might be no. You never know what the answer is. And sometimes your yes might be right there in front of you and you might not get it because you were afraid that they were going to say no. Or if they say no, there might be someone else you might be able to check with that might be able to help you to get to that yes. But don't allow yourself to be um, to not get what you want because you're afraid of the word no. You've heard it before and you'll hear it again numerous, numerous, numerous times in your life. And then taking risks is sometimes required to achieve goals. You've got to take a risk. It's a risk for me to be here in front of you today. So, keys to success. Ask for help. Seldom does anyone achieve success alone. Understand that there are never any bad questions except those that are not asked. And then recognize that decisions, are, that decisions made today can affect the future and could lead to greater challenges um, in, in achieving future um, goals. Let me try that again. It's a little sloppy. So recognize that decisions made today can affect the future and could lead to greater challenges in achieving future goals. And then, so if you make bad decisions, it might prevent your, you from achieving what you want or may delay your ability to get there. Set short and long-term goals to create a roadmap to achieve a plan. So we need to put a plan down on paper and follow it and then track our progress to make sure that we're heading along the path that we're setting out for ourselves. And then commitment to personal responsibility and accountability is required for success. So what we need is a support system. But just because your family is there with you doesn't mean that they're your support system. So what I advise is that ensure that those that share the same space are there to lift you up instead of bringing you down. If your support system is weak, then it's time for a replacement. So what you can do is if you don't have a strong support system at home, maybe Nadia is your new support system. Maybe others that are around you are your new support system. Maybe you have some close friends that have done positive things, have gone on to college. They could be your support system. So just because you have or um, you don't have a good support system in your current environment doesn't mean that there aren't others around you that are more than willing to help. So planning for success. So what is the goal? That's where we start. What needs to be accomplished to achieve the goal? What issues may prevent the goal from being achieved? And that's an important consideration because a lot of times we think about, I want to go do all these things, but you need to think about what are the issues that may prevent the goal from being achieved. So I gave an example of that earlier. What did I tell you was a potential issue with me in reaching my goal here today? I'm sorry, computer failure. So I thought ahead in planning for success, what issues might prevent me from being successful? So you've got to think about those things those things. And if an issue occurs, what is the plan to resolve? So I knew that a potential issue was a computer might not work, but I needed to have a backup plan. What is the projected time frame for completion and then how will success be measured? Because you want to make sure that you have checkpoints along the way. So what are the importance of goal setting? Goal setting is important because it defines the outcome, is future focused, it aids in the measurement of success, current focus because you measure where you are at a moment in time. And that doesn't mean that you have to stay there, but you can make adjustments. And then it's used to evaluate success. So um, past focus, I should say past focus. So goal setting can be broken down short term, less than a year, mid term, greater than one year, but less than five years, and then long term goals, which are greater than five years. So achievement focus. So a secret to achievement is the ability to show up prepared, because rarely does anyone achieve anything without trying and being prepared. So what are the costs of success? So some trade-offs to achieve success. Less time to hang out with friends, the amount of time required to achieve goals, growing pains that seldom does anything someone wants come easily, effort towards the goal. There is always a benefit from trying and not succeeding versus not trying at all. Because even if you do move towards um, something and you're not successful today, the lessons learned can be applied to something else in the future. And then failure is a cost of success. We all fail. You will fail at something over and over and over again. But that is not, that doesn't mean that's where you stay. You fail 
and then you move forward again. That's a part of life. So failure is part of the process. Everyone fails. Here's one of my favorite quotes. Learning from failure. Ever tried? Ever failed? No matter. Try again. Fail again. Fail better. Samuel Beckett. So quest of knowledge. Knowledge is an adventure and cannot be found in your comfort zone. Sometimes we have to push past where we're comfortable in order to find true knowledge. Don't ever stop learning or searching for the quest of knowledge. The future is coming whether you like it or not. So drive yourself towards a personal pursuit of continuous improvement. And what are some of the keys to success? Factors that drive success? Dreams. One of the things that we've done is, uh, since the beginning of our lives is we dreamt, we dreamt about something. But one of the things that we stop doing as we become older is we stop dreaming. Let me tell you, don't ever stop dreaming. I still have dreams today. There's lots of things that I still want to accomplish. Dreams drive passions and drive the energy for you to achieve your goals. Belief, got to believe in yourself. Positive attitude, even if you didn't want to come in here today, you've got to come in. I'm going to get something good out of this experience, and that's why I'm going. Even if you just don't feel like it, Nadia has other things to be concerned about. But she's come in, and she's projecting a positive attitude. She may not be whole, totally here, positive mind, thinking about other things going on at home, but she's here, and she's going to give you her all while she's here. Um, determination, you got to be determined, focus. Keep your eye on the prize, as they would say. Forward thinking. Think what's happening in the future, but work on what you need to today. Perseverance is one of the real keys to success. You've got to get through some of the hurdles. Sometimes we have setbacks, but we've got to get through. And then resilience, that ability to bounce back. You've got to be able to bounce back. And then patience. Things don't, you know, success doesn't happen overnight. So uncover hidden gems. So diamonds aren't the only hidden gems that need to help need help to surface. There are other gems that are just as valuable that need to be uncovered and polished too. And let me tell you something. I was a hidden gem. Not to the environment that I was in. They, their solution was for me to leave. Imagine if I had left school in my sophomore year. Imagine where I would be. I wouldn't have the life that I have today. And most importantly, I wouldn't be here sharing my story. And hopefully to inspire each of you to not give up. So failure is healthy, it's use, useful, and it's critical for growth. So driving force. Make a choice, take a chance, seek a challenge. Don't be afraid to make a choice due to questioning yourself, fear of the unknown, or others' opinions, especially. Take a chance and do something unexpected, as opportunities and new discoveries seldom happen if you're afraid. Fear is normal, so don't be afraid. You know, fear is just part of the process. Do you know why fear is good? Do you know why fear is good? How many, do you think fear, let me just ask the question differently. Do you think fear is a good thing? How about being nervous? Yeah. Do you know, before, I might not look like it, but before I started this presentation, I had a little fear. I was nervous. I started to sweat a little bit. That's why I'm not raising my arms. But that's normal. Fear is part of the process. Do you know when you're fearful, or you know how you sometimes get those butterflies in your stomach? Have you ever had those butterflies in your stomach? Do you know what that means? It means you care. It's not a bad thing. And then once you get started, the butterflies will go away. And there's nothing wrong with caring, because you should care about what you do. So a roadmap to success. Dream of possibilities, desire to do more, determination fueled by belief, Drive to get through the tough times, and there will be tough times. Decisiveness to make a decision. Don't be afraid to make a decision because whether you make a decision or not, in your own mind, you're still making a decision. And dedication to achieve the dream. You've got to be dedicated to achieve anything that you want. So perspective. The past is over. The present is now. So let me back up. The past is over. You can't change it. It's done. The present is now. That's what we have control over right now. But we also have the control over the future because it hasn't happened. We can influence what happens tomorrow by the things that we prepare for today and the actions that we take and the adjustments that we make along the way. There's nothing that can be done to change the past. The present is within your control. And creating and executing a plan now will affect your future. So, Lion and Gazelle. 
Every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or, or it will be killed. Every morning, a lion wakes up. It knows it must outrun the slowest gazelle or it will starve to death. It doesn't matter, matter, sorry, it doesn't matter whether you are a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, you better be running. Good luck, enjoy your journey, and be your best. She has um, provided for all of you to receive um, a gift. And that gift, I want to tell them a little bit about this, um, are these books. These are my books. Um, they're inspirational quotes that I've written that uh, thanks to Nadia and her generosity and thinking about all of you, she's going to provide this, these things to you, okay? <laughs> Still, your thought drew the action so that they could have an opportunity to have these things, right? So I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the books because what I'm going to give you is a little bit of secret that other folks wouldn't know necessarily unless they know me or know someone that knows me. So how many of you know what an Easter egg is? What's an Easter egg? It's a little like um, hidden surprises. Exactly. They're like hidden things that might be in artwork or computer programming or that computer game that, that you play. So um, one thing I'll share with you real quick is this picture on the front. This is me. Believe it or not, see? <laughs> see the resemblance? No, I, hopefully you don't. But this was me five years ago. I actually, I hated the world. Because sometimes we have good moments and sometimes we have bad days. But we have to learn how to get through it. So that's why I decided to start writing these books because sometimes we have really bad things that happen to us. But it's not the things that happen to you, it's how you think about it and what, you, and what do you do to deal with those things. So as I was going through my challenges and as I came out of my personal challenges, out of my darkness, I decided to write these. And these aren't negative messages, these are positive messages. So the first book, part one, Taking Care of Me, is about taking care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself first, you can't take care of anyone else. So that's where it starts. But here's one of the, I'm not going to tell you all the secrets, but I'll tell you a couple of things. So, in the front of each book, there are three um, sentences at the beginning of the book. Don't do it at the beginning, wait. Even though I'm telling you now, wait. It's like a Christmas present, wait. So, and then at the end of the book, there's three sections, okay? When you're done reading the book, when you're done reading the book, read across the pages. So one to one, one to one, or I should say one to one, two to two, three to three, there's a complete message that's listed in here, okay? And that's in each of the books. The other thing I will tell you is that each one of the parts, part one, taking care of me, part two, moving forward, you see the column, and then part three, 